Before the introduction, my talk is about analysis of endogenous compounds in PKBE studies submitted in ANDAs. This presentation reflects my personal view and should not be construed to represent FDA's views or policies. The learning objective of my talk are to identify challenges in establishing bioequivalence of drug products containing endogenous compounds, to explain regulatory requirements and approaches for bioanalysis and establishing BE of drug products containing endogenous compounds. And I will also discuss two case studies. This slide shows some examples of endogenous compounds, such as thyroid hormones, sex hormones, vitamins, bile acid, omega-3, potassium, and iron. Compared to non-endogenous compounds, there are many challenges in establishing BE of endogenous compounds. For example, lack of uh, analyte-free black matrix to prepare calibration standard samples, determination of endogenous levels in biological matrix which are used for quality control sample preparation. Baseline levels are impacted by circadian rhythm, dietary intake, homeostasis. Both release of the drug from the dosage form and endogenous production contribute to the systemic levels of the compounds. These challenges complicate the bioequivalence of endogenous compounds. As I just mentioned, the first challenge is to find analyte-free black matrix to prepare calibration standards. Here I list three common methods to get analyte-free matrix. The first analyte-free matrix is to use stripped biological matrix. The most commonly used stripped biological matrix is activated charcoal stripped matrix. The second analyte-free matrix is dilution of biological matrix. Biological matrix can be diluted with diluent to achieve an endogenous background less than 20% of LOQ. The diluent can be sealing or stripped matrix. The third analyte-free matrix is surrogate matrix. Surrogate matrix can be used when an analyte-free biological matrix is not readily available or cannot be prepared. The use of surrogate matrix for the preparation of calibration standards should be justified. The use of surrogate matrix should be supported by comparable recovery data between QCs in surrogate matrix and QCs in authentic matrix. Comparable matrix effect by using multiple lots in surrogate and authentic matrices. Analyte stability in both surrogate matrix and authentic matrix and the parallelism test. Now let's talk about the preparation of QC samples for endogenous compounds. The QC samples should be prepared by spiking quantities of analytes in the same biological matrix as the study samples. The endogenous concentrations of the analyte in the biological matrix should be evaluated before QC preparation. The concentrations for the QCs should account for the endogenous concentrations in the biological matrix. Nominal QC concentrations in biological matrix is equal to endogenous concentration plus spiked concentration. If biological matrix is used for calibration standards, QCs should be prepared in biological matrix for both method validation and study sample analysis. If stripped biological matrix is used for calibration standards, QCs should be prepared in stripped biological matrix and unstripped biological matrix for the method validation 
and QC should be prepared in unstripped biological matrix for study sample analysis. If surrogate matrix is used for calibration standards, QCs should be prepared in surrogate matrix and authentic matrix for the method validation. And QC should be prepared in authentic matrix for study sample analysis. There are different approaches to measure endogenous level when matrices without interference are not available. The first measurement approach is standard addition approach. Every study sample is divided into aliquots of equal volume. All aliquots but one are separately spiked with known and varying amounts of the analyte standards to construct a calibration curve for every study sample. The study sample concentration is determined as a negative x-intercept of the standard calibration curve prepared in that particular study sample. The second measurement approach is background subtraction approach. The endogenous background concentration of analytes in a pooled representative matrix are subtracted from the concentrations of the added standards. Subsequently, the subtracted concentrations are used to construct the calibration curve. The third measurement approach is surrogate matrix approach, which we just discussed earlier. The fourth measurement approach is surrogate analyte approach. Stable isotope labeled analytes are used as surrogate standards to construct calibration curves for the, quantifi for the quantification of endogenous analyte. Next, I will present two case studies. Case study number one, inadequate method validation for surrogate matrix method. This drug product has endogenous compound. The applicant used HPLC MSMS with liquid-liquid extraction method to measure analyte concentration. PBS and 2% BSA was used as surrogate matrix. However, the applicant did not provide justification for the use of surrogate matrix. For, in, for all in-house ANDAs of, this, of the same drug product, this is the only ANDA using surrogate matrix to prepare calibration standards. All the other ANDAs used stripped human plasma to prepare calibration standards. The applicant was asked to provide the justification for the use of surrogate matrix. In the bioanalysis, surrogate matrix was used to prepare CS and QC samples for method validation and study sample analysis. Human serum was used to prepare QC samples for method validation and study sample analysis. The preparation of CS and QC samples are, are acceptable, but the recovery data in the method validation was only conducted in surrogate matrix. The applicant was asked to provide the recovery data in authentic matrix. The applicant also conducted a parallelism study. CS samples were prepared from surrogate matrix and authentic matrix. The blank matrix pool was quantified against the surrogate matrix curve in six replicates and the mean was used as a baseline endogenous level for the pool. Theoretical concentrations for, for CS samples in human serum are equal to baseline endogenous level plus fortified concentrations. For the presentation purpose, fortified concentration up to 40 nanograms per mil is shown here. Endogenous level can be calculated from the negative x-intercept extrapolated from the calibration curve in authentic matrix, which is 5.25 nanogram per mil. Endogenous level can also be calculated from the fortified concentration in calibration curve from surrogate matrix to achieve the same response 
as a wide intercept from the calibration curve in authentic matrix, which is 5.29 nanogram per mil. Indigenous, indigenous levels calculated by these two methods are comparable. Slopes of calibration curves in surrogate and authentic matrices are also comparable. However, there is only one run each from surrogate matrix and human serum. The applicant was asked to provide at least three sets of parallelisms data. Linear regression was used in the parallelism study, but quadratic regression was used in the pivotal BE study. The applicant was asked to use the same regression and weighting factor. Summary of case study number one and the use of surrogate matrix. If surrogate matrix is used, justification is needed. Recovery data should be comparable between QCs in surrogate and authentic matrices. For parallelism study, at least three sets of parallelism data are needed. Slopes of calibration curves in surrogate and authentic matrices should be comparable. In darkness level in black matrix, back calculated against the calibration curve in surrogate matrix should be comparable to the negative x-intercept, extrapolated from calibration curves in authentic matrix. The parallelism study should use the same regression and weighting factor as that in the pivotal B study. Case study number two, background subtraction method. The drug product has endogenous compound, HPLC MSMS, with solid phase extraction was used to measure the analyte concentration. Baseline corrected peak area of the analyte was used for recovery, specificity, selectivity, and matrix effect test. For example, in the recovery study, baseline was determined by mean area of analyte of three black samples processed during the recovery experiment. Recovery is then calculated by extracted samples over post-extracted spiked samples after baseline correction. The results showed comparable recovery at all QC levels. Baseline corrected area response ratio was used to calculate CS and QC sample concentrations. First, Black plasma concentration was screened. Secondly, mean area response ratio was calculated from poured black plasma with internal standard in triplicates. Third, baseline corrected area response ratio was calculated by subtracting the mean area response ratio of black plasma from each of the CS and QC samples. Last, calibration curve was plotted using the corrected area response ratio, and the QC sample concentrations were back calculated against the calibration curve using the corrected area response ratio. This slide shows an example for one analytical run. So, uh, the area response ratios for black plasma with the internal standard highlighted in yellow are comparable. Baseline corrected area response ratios for CS and QC samples highlighted in green were calculated by subtracting the mean area response ratio of black, black, black plasma from each of the CS and QC samples. The area response ratio of black plasma with internal standard in each run for all study subjects are consistent. The calibration curve shows good linear relationship. The background subtraction method is considered acceptable. In summary, there are challenges in establishing bioequivalence for drug products which contain endogenous compounds. 
there is interference from endogenous analyze in black matrix. Stepwise procedure for the preparation of CS and QC samples is recommended. Stepwise procedure for the measurement of endogenous analyte concentrations from black matrix is recommended. Adequate justification and complete cross-validation data should be provided when surrogate matrix is used. Now it's challenge question time. Challenge question number one. Which one of the following statements is not true for the parallelism study to support the use of surrogate matrix? A. At least three sets of parallelism data. B. Quality controls used in the parallelism study should be representative of the major subject concentrations. C. Same sets of quality controls should be used to parallelism and pivotal BE studies. D. Same regression and weighting factor should be used to parallelism and pivotal BE studies. You have 10 seconds to answer the question. The correct answer is C. Because quality controls can be different between parallelism study and pivotal BE study, as long as quality controls cover the same range of measured study sample concentration. Challenge question number two. Which one of the following statements is true for the quality control preparation of endogenous compound? A. The QCs should be prepared by spiking known quantities of the analyte in the same biological matrix as the calibration standards for study sample analysis. B. The endogenous concentrations of the analyte in the biological matrix should be evaluated after QC preparation. C. The concentrations for QCs should account for the endogenous concentrations in the biological matrix. D. QC concentrations calculated by background subtraction are actual QC concentrations which is endogenous level plus spiked concentration. You have 10 seconds to answer the question. The correct answer is C. A is wrong because calibration standards are prepared in analyte free matrix, but QC samples are prepared in biological matrix for study sample analysis. B is wrong because the indigenous concentrations of the analyte in the biological matrix should be evaluated before QC preparation. D is wrong because QC concentrations calculated by background subtraction are QC concentrations after subtraction of indigenous concentration, which is spiked concentration. Last but not least, I would like to thank my colleagues Ron, Utpo, Nilofer, Ethan, Bing, Tian, He, Hisan, Trinshan, Yun, Akia for their help on the preparation of this talk. That concludes my presentation. I will respond to submitted questions in the QC session. Thank you.